Yeah. Okay. I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. talk about this week timmy oh man you know i think it's antenna building time people seem to like our antenna videos it, you talk comically getting, true you talk yeah. about getting views I, I guess some of you guys like putting wire together so uh this week we're I gonna put that. some uh putting the solder to the wire we're put some solder to the wire in this case to the <laughs> little chunks of tape measure because <laughs> this week in a 3 OTD makers corner segment we're going to show you how to build a two meter beam in VHF amateur radio direction finding, commonly known as ARDF, almost no portable antenna is more commonly seen than the 2 meter tape measure Yagi beam antenna. For basic 2 meter ARDF with an HD, it is a convenient, easily constructed solution. The 2 meter tape measure beam, as commonly built, seems to be the invention of Joe Legio, WB2HOL. His website has been serving up basic instructions for this antenna since the early 1990s in one form or another, and is the genesis of these antennas in my local area. The instructions for this antenna we're about to build, with a couple of minor modifications, come from that website, and it can be found linked below. WB2HOL is unfortunately a recent silent key as of December 2020 and this antenna is just one of several great ARDF and fox hunting projects he has left behind for those of us today. A three element Yagi is made up of one active element and two parasitic elements. The active element, called the driven element, is the only one actually connected to your radio. By itself, the driven element is a simple half-wave dipole antenna. The other elements, the parasitic elements, also sometimes called passive radiators, affect the direction the RF radiation from your transmitter is focused, as well as the direction from which your receiver receives RF the strongest. The parasitic element behind the driven element is called the reflector. It is slightly longer than the driven element in total length. The element in front of the driven element is called the director. It is slightly shorter than the driven element. You can have multiple directors on a Yagi antenna of this design, but for ease of use and portability, the only one is used in this design. The front of the Yagi antenna, that is, the end you want to point at the distant place you want to transmit to or receive from, is determined by the end the director elements are located at. You can tell which way a Yagi antenna is pointing by looking for the longest element, which will always be a reflector, or the back of the antenna. The end with the shortest element will be a director, which means that is the front of the antenna. This antenna is designed around a center frequency of 146.565 MHz, which has become somewhat of a standard frequency for 2 meter ARDF and fox hunting. It will work with reasonably low SWR across the entire 2 meter amateur radio band. So let's get started. Here's a list of materials you'll need. At least 3 feet of half inch PVC pipe, 2 half inch PVC crosses and a half inch PVC T, a one inch width tape measure you're willing to sacrifice, some large zip ties, at least two hose clamps, 50 ohm coax such as RG58 or RG8X, one end with no connector, the other end with a connector of your choice. In our case, the connector is a standard PL259. A small piece of wire at least five inches to use for the hairpin match. Tools you'll need include a marker, a tape measure you are not willing to sacrifice, a flat screwdriver, a pair of tin snips, a pair of side cuts or scissors for trimming zip ties down, a small hand saw, sandpaper, coarse grit is best but any should work, solder and preferably a Weller soldering gun. A soldering iron might work but the Weller will work more quickly with the tape measure elements. First measure and mark at 11 and half inches as well as 18 and half inches on your pipe. Next take your saw and cut on your two marks. The first two pieces of pipe make up the boom for your Yagi. Cut off a third piece at a length of your choosing to use as a handle for the antenna. Make sure to keep it separate from the other two pieces. Next, lay out your three sections and number them. The handle is zero, the short piece is one, and the longer piece is two. Piece one should be seven inches long, and piece two should be 11 and a half. Now for the antenna elements. Take your tin snips and cut the end off the sacrificial tape measure. 
Be careful of the sharp edge is created and also be sure the tape lock is engaged on the tape measure or you'll end up having to disassemble it. First we'll measure for the reflector element. It should be 41 and 3 8 inches long. Mark then cut this piece. Mark it R on the back. The driven element will be made from two separate pieces, both being the same length. Measure and cut a piece that is 17 and 3 4 inches long. Then use that piece to mark and cut a second piece the exact same length. Mark both sections DR. Next, measure, mark, and cut a section of tape measure that is 35 and 1 8th inches long. This will be your director element. Mark it D1. To make the antenna easier to put together later on, make sure to find the center of the reflector and director elements. The center of the reflector should be at 20 and 11 16th inches, and the center of the director should be at 17 and 9 16th inches. Next, prepare the PVCT and two crosses with about 20 winds of vinyl electrical tape per side, two opposing sides on the crosses, and the T should be self-explanatory. This helps the tape measure elements lie properly across the joints without bending inward, as the crosses and T are not necessarily flat, even with the curvature of the measuring tape. Center the reflector element on one of the crosses and prepare your zip ties by forming each into a large loop. Slide the ties over each side and pull them tight against the joint, making sure the element remains centered as you pull them as tight as you can. Once you're sure the zip ties are tight enough, clip the excess part off. Repeat these steps using the PVCT for the director element. Now we need to prepare the driven element for connection to the coax. Get your sandpaper and sand the paint off the back side of one end of each half of the element until you are down to bare metal. Next, take your scrap wire and cut it down to 5 inches in length and strip the insulation from both ends. This will be used for the hairpin match in order to get SWR to tolerable levels for transmitting. Get your solder and weller out and tin both ends of the wire. Go ahead and tin the shield and center conductor on your coax as well. Now, take one of the halves of the driven element and heat it up for a bit with the weller on full power. Put some pressure on it to make sure it's very hot and make a pool of solder on it. Repeat this for the other half. Once it cools a bit, make sure the pads are not cold joints by tapping on them with the screwdriver to make sure they won't come off the metal. Next, solder the center conductor of the coax to one half and its shield to the other half.
Then sink one end of the 5 inch wire into the solder pad on each element. The assembly should be able to withstand gentle tugging without the solder joints coming loose. Now grab the last remaining PVC cross and lie the assembly on top of it like this. Slide your hose clamps over each end and tighten them slightly. Get your reflector and director assemblies as well as the numbered pipe segments and assemble them with pipe 1 between the reflector and driven element and pipe 2 between the driven element and the director element. Be sure to seat the pipes in fully so that the, di the distance between the elements is correct. This will usually take some force to accomplish. Pipe zero becomes your handle. If you have an SWR meter for two meters available, hook the antenna and radio to it per its instructions and check the antenna's SWR. If it is too high, loosen the pipe clamps and slide the two halves of the driven element apart more and test again. Repeat this, sliding the halves closer or further apart to get the SWR as close to one to one as possible. Usually the elements will need to be about one inch apart for the lowest SWR. If you don't have an SWR meter immediately available, keep your transmit power low to protect your radio until you can obtain one. If you're only using the antenna to receive for ARDF, this step is not critical. Finally, let's give the antenna a test. Always my favorite, that's for sure. Well, I think I'm gonna get off here and put this thing down and see what I can do with it here. Mess with it a little more, maybe. Catch you later, man. 73 KB9 SNL. So what you guys saying? It's a good intent, isn't it? It's good oh, yeah. for hunting in foxes and stuff. Indeed. Or sticking out the window to talk to your buddy down the road a little easier with your HT. A lot of good uses for that little antenna. And they're, they store sure. flexible like. Easy to tune too. Get it set yep. to flat SWR real easily. So. Yep. Oh man. Well, you know. I'd say no tape measures were harmed in the making of this video, but that that's not no, true. Not true at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor well, thing. guys. Sadness. And the padded rooms are anxious. They're it's screaming and clawing, and presumably drooling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's time bit. for echoes from the asylum. Oh, no. Segment Not of that each. again. Yeah. Unfortunately, really yes, it's a segment of each episode where we hear from you, the viewer of Three Old Tech Dudes. Uh, both of these comments this week are off the same video. You don't have that Ooh. every day. So, uh, And they're yes. from uh, mega regulars of the channel. If you wonder why these guys get featured so much it's because they make good comments and they're also our friends well, and they, to fans they comment period however we mostly met them through the channel yeah so first up we've got dan evans on the regency touch k100 scanner video um oh, yeah. this uh video for context these comments aren't related to the subject of the video they're related to the original cb radio talking segment hmm. oh, okay <laughs> 
Uh, so Dan Evans, K9ZF writes, I started out back in the 80s as Night Driver. Ooh. And I think it's a cool story. I helped my parents start a cab service. I've always had a knack wow. for technology, so it fell to me to install radios in all three of our cars. Eventually, I even rigged a telephone answering machine to key my base station so I could receive calls when I was out in the cab. 80s, remember? No cell phones. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that got me started right in radio. After a few years of CB, I couldn't take all of the trash. Relatable. Been there. A few friends and I discovered amateur radio, which was a lot more fun to me, so I never looked back. Enjoying the videos. Keep up the good work. 73K9ZF. Yep. Neat. Cool. You know what I think is really funny about that comment is uh, so one of my buddies from high school, uh, his dad worked at a cab company, and they also utilize CB radios. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So. Well, they are a bit, they're classified for business, so you'll see dump truck guys using them sometimes, and trucking mm-hmm. companies to some extent even today, especially if they're in proximity to each other. So. Yeah. Like on a site or something working. So. Um, next up, we've got one from Norm. Norma Miller. Norm. It's also relating to the CB radio talking. Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, My handle was Red Dog. My bark was worse than my bite. I was an idiot. My first scanner was a Regency ATC R106 crystal radio. Nice. (laughs) Greg claims I hit him when he flicked the switches on and off too much. I bet you did. Uh, Yeah, I bet there's some truth. I, (laughs) I told him I just wanted all tin flashing linearly lights on like Knight Rider. He turned out okay. 7-3, KC9CSC. Uh, uh, Norm thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> we like Greg. Actually, Greg's, Greg's Greg nice guy. Greg is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just let Justina go, can I you? I sure can't. That's just for that. I'm linking the video right here. <laughs> so you know, Unless I find about, out it was so. Norm that gave me that nickname, in which case he's about to become Norma. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, no, we're not. But for some reason, that, that just has Greg written all over yep. it. It does have Greg written all over it. I think he was the narrator, so. <laughs> so, but they're actually, they're, they're hilarious guys. They really are. Three old biddies talking about nothing. That's, yeah. right. That's us. <laughs> That's fine. I don't care. You always mm. say that. I don't care I either. I don't care. Just, I Man, he hasn't funny. come back yet. Get him back here and make some more smack comments so I can have some good echoes of the asylum <laughs> segments. Come on, man. Where are you at, Keith? They're funny. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. All right. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, well, well, we've reached that uh, wavy time that we always have right about now. Are they going through your head? Yeah, again. Dude. Wow. Welcome to the waves. That segment of each episode where we welcome an amateur radio hopper. Hop, a hopperator? A amateur radio hopperator to the hobby. And this week, we're going to welcome uh, Kilo Charlie One Papa Uniform X-Ray. Nice. Sandra Velasquez of Middletown, Rhode Island, is a technician. Very nice. Hey, it's one of them, uh, oh. them fillet sorts instead of a feller. Go her. Uh, need, need more of the, uh, what is it they say in weird ham radio lingo, which I've always thought was a little weird. Oh. Uh, YLs. XYL. XYL. I think it's what you call an old woman. It's like, that's my, my old lady. Is that what that is? It's CW stuff. It's where it came from. It like is. Seven threes around. It's, it's from yeah, CW. It's, it's easier well, yeah, to say seven three than talk to you later. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Good on you making the hobby. I hope you enjoy yeah. it and uh, and get a lot of mileage out of it, man. Rhode Island. That's a I, and you get into HF. That can be a hard state to get. I have worked Rhode Island. There's quite a few hams in Rhode Island. You wouldn't think so, but yeah. Did well, I say you uh, betcha up there? You betcha. Don't you know? I think that's not up there. No, I, I think that's maybe no. like northern. No, you got Michigan. Minnesota. Anyway. Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they say in Rhode Island then? I don't know. Chowderhead. <laughs> I don't know. They say that we're we're not right in the head. New <laughs> England <laughs> stuffs. Oh, so they parked the car in the yard. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <sighs> hey, you know what? Before we lose our minds any further, we better get out of here. I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. This is Three Old Tech Dudes. Later. (laughs) Siblings shouldn't shack off together. Yeah, I think I'm leaving that. (laughs) 
Thanks for hanging out with us here on 3 Old Tech News. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3 OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at 3 Old Tech News 1 on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3 OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.